Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Reimagine Mobility. I'm here with Katherine Snorrison from the NEDC and specifically from the Future Mobility and Electrification Group. Uh, you guys do a lot of stuff for the state of Michigan. You work across different states with different organizations. So please to start out for our listeners and viewers, explain what you're doing, what you're part in the state, and then let's jump and see what is in this case the state of Michigan doing to help reimagine mobility. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for having me and our office. Uh, like you said, my name is Catherine and I'm with the state of Michigan's Office of Future Mobility and Electrification. Our group uh, in the state was started by Governor Whitmer uh, in February of 2020 by executive directive. Uh, and it's great to see the state of Michigan take this leadership stance in mobility and electrification. We've been working in the space for a long time. Um, but our office is really, you know, the one mobility office here in the state, but we collaborate across the state. Um, so we couldn't exist without Governor Whitmer's leadership and then involvement from the from four key state agencies. We work with many others, uh, but our team spans across uh, economic development, the MEDC, like you mentioned, transportation, that's MDOT, our labor department, that's LEO, and the um, environment and grid, that's EGLE. Uh, so lots of acronyms there, but the main point to take away uh, is the state of Michigan has one mobility office and we're able to do uh, some great work here in the state by collaborating across the state. Um, and our vision and our, our mission, what we come to work to do every day is to strengthen the state economy around mobility and electrification, but really being laser focused on the needs of our residents uh, in three ways, creating safer, more equitable and environmentally conscious transportation. And you'll hear me talk about, you know, multimodal efforts, making sure that's air, land and sea um, and really making sure we're, we're leading from an innovation standpoint. Right. We're, we're, we're pushing the bounds of where this technology is going but we're meeting the needs that we see for our residents. And then that transfers to, right, the residents of other states, other countries. Um, and it's great to see that ripple effect. Very good. Sounds very complicated, almost as complicated or maybe more than the organization I'm leading or, or working for. So uh, it's good to see we're not the only ones. So uh, I understand. Yeah. Complicated and works. So that, that's the key. That's the key. So when you talk about future mobility and, and, and electrification, is it then covering all of mobility or are you really focused on, let's say, one of the two or three mega trends that we see in the mobility, which is electrification? Yeah, yeah, great, great question. Uh, so we define mobility as the movement of people, goods, and information, you know, broadly services. Um, and like I said, it is multimodal. Um, so we really are ensuring that we have our work spans across the state. We have two peninsulas here in Michigan, the lower and the upper, um, and it's it's multimodal. So we have efforts in uh, maritime, uh, aerial mobility, obviously on the road, lots of different modes there, all the way from public transit to micro mobility to, you know, your your individual vehicle that you drive to work every day. Um, and so we really want to see solutions across all of those because that's what's going to answer the needs for our residents to get where they need every day. You know, we're not talking about uh, extra trips. We're talking about just getting to jobs, getting to school, getting to appointments and making life easier and making that transportation more accessible. Um, and, and so for us, it, it is multimodal. Uh, but, but electrification is a huge focus. And that's why we couldn't just include it, you know, in mobility. We had we called it out for our office. Um, we did announce a state strategy at the auto show last year. And then ahead of the Detroit Auto Show this year, uh, we just published uh, an update on that strategy, an online dashboard. And so I, I, I can share that and we can include that in the uh, podcast here. But two of the goals are focused on electrification very specifically, others more broadly. Uh, but two of those are ensuring we have the infrastructure to support the needs of electric vehicles on Michigan roads in the future. We predict there'll be two million electric vehicles on Michigan roads by 2030. And so we need 100,000 chargers across the state, 100,000 ports uh, to ensure we're supporting those needs in the future. Uh, and those solutions could look different, right? So I, I say ports, uh, but we also are testing a lot of different innovations around electrification. So uh, inductive charging, charging in the road as you drive is just one of the solutions we're testing with Electrion here in the state, with the deployment in Detroit. Uh, they have dynamic and static inductive charging. So imagine 
uh, a driver, right, is dropping off packages at a location, that that truck is sitting there, right? And so if it has a receiver underneath and there's a charging pad in the ground, it can actually charge while that truck is sitting there dropping off packages. Uh, and then dynamic being, right, you can charge over a road as you're driving. That's, you know, makes the most sense for shuttles that are driving fixed route um, and many other innovative solutions that in, in that space. So it's great to see, you know, we're making sure the infrastructure can meet the needs of those vehicles that will be on our roads and meeting the needs in many different ways. It's not just one solution. Um, and then the second goal there around electrification is focus on the grid, right? So we talk about all these chargers that are coming online. You need to make sure the grid can handle that. So 80% of the charging happening off peak. Uh, we're already measuring that with our utilities, DTE consumers, and many others. Uh, we're seeing we're hitting that goal at 88% charging off peak. Uh, so we want to make sure we can continue to heat, hit at least the 80% mark over the years as more electric vehicles come on our roads. Very interesting. And when you talk infrastructure, do I assume right when you talk infrastructure, it's not just charging wired or wireless. It's not just um, the ability to have vehicles on the road, et cetera, accessibility to the vehicles, but also from a technology side. So having the right technology in the state from a, from a development perspective, from a validation perspective, from a manufacturing perspective. Is that a fair assumption? Absolutely. You need that full roadmap, that full value and supply chain to make it all happen. Um, so like you said, everything from the supply chain and the manufacturing side, uh, which is where Michigan has really led in the past and will continue to lead in the future, to uh, a big area that our office is focused on is innovation around testing and deploying. So we have uh, a grant co program called the Michigan Mobility Funding Platform. And it's really a way to remove one of the biggest barriers for companies who are testing new technology, right, to solve the world's biggest mobility problems, which is funding. Uh, so a company from anywhere in the world uh, can come to the state of Michigan and deploy their mobility and electrification technology uh, in two ways. So we have partnered with nine different test sites across the state of Michigan. So you can actually test at one of these test sites. Uh, I'll go through those in a second and receive a grant for that. Or if you're ready to test beyond a test site in a real world setting, uh, we have partners lined up who are ready to partner with you to see what that would look like. You do need a local partner. Uh, if you're going to be in a real world setting, so we want to make sure we have that that local engagement from the community standpoint and that community benefit as well as you're rolling out your technology. We never want to lose trust with the community and rolling out a technology and then pulling it away. There has to be a longer term, term game for Michigan uh, and our residents. But those grants can help you test at a test site or in a real world setting. Um, and then we want you to grow from there, right? Testing is just the first stage. Um, from there, we want to help you find partners so that you can grow your company here in Michigan uh, and and find ways not only to innovate, but but scale that innovation. Okay. So maybe for some of our listeners that are not in the state of Michigan and don't understand how we are the central hub in the world, I think, for automotive technology or mobility, even maybe give some of our viewers why in the world would I come to Michigan? Why Michigan? You know, it's cold in the winter, in in the summer it might be muggy, all that stuff, besides all the great lakes and all the stuff that we know are here. But tell our listeners why Michigan. Maybe a little bit of a advertising uh, section yeah. here of our podcast. Absolutely. That's why I took the job. I, I'm very passionate about the state of Michigan and mobility. And so I was like, whoa, a job to sell the state of Michigan. That's fantastic. And I get paid to do it. Um, so, you know, we like to brag about having an all weather environment. Right. And so you can test right in, in perfect weather conditions on perfect roads at our test sites. But you could also test in the Upper Peninsula when they have feet of snow or they can freeze a parking lot with ice. Um, so really, if you're looking to test your technology in all different kinds of conditions, we've got every condition you can think of here in Michigan, um, because no no state has perfect weather or perfect roads. So you need to make sure that technology can really be tested. Uh, so that's why I would bank on this, you know, bet on the state of Michigan and come here to test. Um, beyond that, like you said, our, our history is in automotive. We have 26 OEMs here. Um auto companies, right? The the big three, GM, Ford, Stellantis, and many, many others uh, that we that we work closely with, Toyota, Rivian, Waymo, many others. Um, 
We not they not only have that manufacturing presence here, uh, but we involve a lot of them in our policy making. So our council, I've, I've talked about or our office, I've talked about some of our programs, but we also focus on policy here in the state. So it's really important for mobility companies to consider: Does the state or the location I'm going to have policies that support my growth? Right. When scooter companies came out, cities and states didn't have policies on scooters. They didn't know how to handle it. And some have even been banned like in, in Paris. Um, so we are very intentional at making sure Michigan is not only leading from a programming standpoint, right, with partnerships and, and funding, but also from a policy standpoint, you have to pair the two together. Uh, so we have a council that's made up of public and private sector leaders from across the state, including those OEMs that I just mentioned. Um, and they we meet every other month. And we work, we we look at what policies Michigan has, where we're already leading, and then where we can continue to lead based on the trends in the industry. So those people are spending their time on action teams and coming up with resolutions that we're taking to our legislators and then moving into policy for the state. Um, so you really can't beat that. A state that has that all-weather environment for testing and then the programming and the policy pieces to support your innovation and growth. If I wouldn't be in Michigan right now, I would come to Michigan right now. So great, great job of, of, of letting us know here. Very good. So you refer to several different initiatives and several different groups. Again, you mentioned you're part of the Office of Future Mobility and Electrification. There's several other ones. Tell me a little bit about these other ones and how they tie together. And again, further help. I want to say, let's say, let's not focus on Michigan. Let's focus on the companies that are in Michigan. Uh, and how they help, again, that complete ecosystem of which the talent pool is probably one of the best in the world because it's concentrated here, the experience, the knowledge, uh, along with the universities and all that. So maybe share a little yeah. bit about that, Catherine. Sure, absolutely. And that is why our office was set up the way it was so that when a company comes here, they have many different needs, right? And when we have four different state departments standing up our office, that means that it those doors are, they're open. They're permanently open for us to engage those state departments. You know, we really can act as a concierge to help a company grow. So just some examples, you know, because the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, MEDC, is part of it. If you're looking for sites to look at, office space, talent, we have entire teams that where they wake up and they think about those things every single day. And those are just a quick email introduction away um, for making sure you you have the right points of contact in the economic development space as you're looking to grow. And then being partnered, uh, the other state department on labor, um, labor and economic opportunity, LEO, uh, another acronym. Uh, if you're looking for talent in the state, right, there are many, many different talent programs to help make sure that you have the talent you need to grow. And Michigan is absolutely leading in that space. Uh, that's why it's one of the three focus areas for our state strategy, our, one of the pillars is focused on transitioning and growing our mobility industry and workforce. That's making sure that we have um, enough uh, people people with mobility credentials to fill the jobs of the future in the mobility space. And we're ensuring we have people uh, who could support the manufacturing and automotive space as well. The third state department is MDOT, Michigan Department of Transportation. Uh, so when you hear about big announcements coming out from the state around Cavenue, Electrion, or any kind of testing, construction safety, those are only possible because MDOT has been able to develop an entire team of people dedicated to innovative mobility technology. And it's not just the project managers, it's all the way down to the procurement department, where they literally have people dedicated to innovative mobility solutions. Not every Department of Transportation can handle that or is thinking about that. And then last, EGLE, our Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy. So they're thinking about the grid. They're thinking about the environment. They're thinking about the charging stations and making sure they're setting up programs in partnership with the Michigan Public Service Commission to support those infrastructure and grid needs of the future. So all of those doors are permanently open when you engage our office in work and growing it in the state. Um, and that's why it was essential that our office was set up the way, way it was. Uh, and then, you know, we have, like you said, we have so many different players in the mobility space, all the way from a startup who just started a few months ago and they're looking for prototyping space, all the way to the biggest OEMs in the world. Uh, and then in the middle, many other players and partners in between from universities to VCs. Uh, and we constantly are forming opportunities for people to 
collide into each other in a very collaborative sense to form new partnerships. So we have mobility meetups uh, every other month for people to meet each other um, and just network, just have that opportunity to be in the same room. And then a lot of programming around existing shows in the Detroit, uh, two that are coming up next week, which I hope others, some on the call um, and who are hearing this could join us at the Battery Show and the Detroit Auto Show are both in one week. And that's why we were able to create uh, September as Mich- the Mobility Month for the state of Michigan. There's so much activity here in September. You have to be in Michigan all year round, but especially in September uh, with those two shows and then Ann Arbor Spark having their A2 Tech 360 and a Mobility Summit. Uh, so those are just some things that are happening in September uh, and why, why you got to be here now. It, it sounds like it. I should, I should change some of my travel plans so I can be more sensitive for the month of the you know, automotive. That's great. Um, Catherine, maybe a, a slightly different question. With, with all that stuff that's in place, right, let's call that also an infrastructure or a foundation that's in place for industry, for private and public collaboration to really further enhance and frankly, reimagine mobility, what is missing? Is, is something missing that you say, hey, guys, you know, we would like to get more support, more engagement, more more energy from companies like an AVL, from us, like uh, one of the OEMs. What is, in your opinion, missing to really, let's say, build upon that foundation, not slowly, but really with speed and really accelerate this this foundation, this framework you guys have built? Absolutely. My favorite thing is when people actually come and experience what we have in the state of Michigan. I think sometimes we get a bad rap, you know, um, sometimes the brand represents where we've been in the past, which we've absolutely um, been in a leadership position in automotive and manufacturing and will continue to stay a lead in that space. But I think sometimes that impacts our brand when we talk about mobility, right? It, it is technology. It is innovation. Um, so I, I just am continuing to look for opportunities to bring people to the state, uh, whether you are coming here for a conference or a meeting, please uh, engage our office so we can create a more robust experience for you that's customized, whether that's seeing a test site that you can and can engage in, seeing all the transformation that's happening in Detroit and the entire state. Uh, one example is the Michigan Central Innovation District. So you have an entire district uh, here in the city of Detroit uh, that is focused on innovation. So many people know the, the train station that's being renovated by Ford. Uh, that'll open up later this year or next year. Uh, but they already opened a building just to the left of it called New Lab at Michigan Central. And that's an innovation space where I'm sitting right now uh, with our team and my dog. Um, <laughs> and it, it's great to see space in here where companies can do prototyping. They can start their journey in Michigan. But then, you know, there's really intentionality in the innovation district on how they can grow here and scale as well. And that partnership is only possible because Michigan Central came together with the city of Detroit and the state of Michigan to sign an MOU to see how we can make this a true innovation district. And one of those ways is making a transportation innovation zone. So what that means is the area surrounding the Michigan Central train station is an innovation zone where we can speed up, right, the rate of innovation, the rate of testing that's happening on Michigan, on Detroit roads. Um, So, you know, so many things that I could talk about here, but just really want to put a plug in for, for the innovation. Yeah, that's great. And maybe a, the final question, or one of the final questions, what, what do you see mobility look like in, in Michigan in the next five to 10 years? And what I mean with that is, again, you mentioned by, I think, 2030, you said 2 million EVs on the road in Michigan. Um, what about autonomous? Are we talking level three plus? Are we talking level, I mean, level three? Are we talking level two plus? Are we actually talking level four? Are we two going to five? And maybe some other things. How do you see the mobility space in Michigan look like a stay with Michigan, look like in the next five to 10 years? So from your perspective, was what you see working with all these different startups and 100 plus year OEMs and then suppliers that have been here in the state? Yeah, absolutely. I, I look to the technology we're already testing here. So I talked a little bit about inductive charging with Electron. I think we're going to see that scale um, and other um you know, electrification technology scale across the state, but then also Cavenue. So connected infrastructure that can enhance the connectivity and autonomous features in your vehicle. 
Um, so these are dedicated lanes to ensure your safety and the safety of others. Uh, so that's a partnership between the state of Michigan and Cavenu, um, with MDOT being the project lead there. And so I think you're going to see a change in infrastructure, a change in how you charge your vehicle, a change in how you drive with these dedicated lanes and an enhancement to your connected vehicle technology. And I think people are, are just going to see this technology more present, right? So we're even doing testing where uh, drones are at uh, doing testing at an airport in West Michigan looking at the security, right? So you can't have uh, a security officer knowing what's going on, you know, driving across the grounds and knowing everything that's happening at the airport. So these drones can help enhance those security features um, and they're being tested at an airport. So I think, you know, in order to see where the, where Michigan is leading and what the future looks like, for me, it's looking at what technology are we testing because we're testing it because our intention is to scale, right? We're okay to fail along the way. That's part of testing. That's part of innovation and, and taking the risk um, and part of changing our brand. But but we really are looking at ways that innovation can scale across the state. And those are just a few examples. Okay. So I guess then to maybe end on a funny note, I guess yeah. we're assured that over the next five to 10 years, we continue to have potholes in Michigan then, right? I mean, I mean, uh, we like to say all weather roads. All so we weather have all roads. All weather environment. All weather roads. It's great for testing. There are potholes <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> that that is very much true. If you want to test on rough roads, in some cases, Michigan gives you everything. Great roads, the ones with potholes. We got dirt yep. roads, right? Which not every state we do. has. We do. So, uh, we do. You're absolutely right. And then we certainly have snow and slush and ice and everything else. So I agree with we you. Do. I mean, Michigan. Uh, all joking oh. aside, from Michigan, from that perspective, gives you an ability to really, in, in one location, uh, depending oh. on, the, on the season, test a lot of different things. So that's perfect. 100%. And, our, and, and Governor Whitmer, who started our office, uh, also ran on the slogan, fix the damn roads. And you absolutely see that here in Michigan. Construction cones everywhere and uh, a real investment in infrastructure here, which is also great timing for our technology, right? So if you're going to fix a road... Hey. Also put some technology in there to enhance the capabilities of your vehicle. I would agree. And again, if you need to test in construction zones, Michigan is one uh, once again uh, leading the pack here as well. I agree with you. Absolutely. Catherine, thank you so much for, for your vision of what uh, reimagined mobility is going to look like in, in the future and how we, and in this case, how the state of Michigan and your team and teams uh, are helping doing that. Thank you so much for your view you. and uh, your perspective here. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Reimagine Mobility Podcast. If you liked this episode, please subscribe and tell a friend.